Hey guys, it's Spacey Sims, and we're here with a new game. It's called The Bottom of the Well. Uh, this is basically a visual novel game. It's free on Steam, so I figured I'd give it a try. And uh, some people, certain playthroughs only take like 20 to 30 minutes, so I figured we'd just do one and see what it's about. Um, and it's basically, you're playing Alice, who is talking about, um, I believe, you know, I'm going to bring up the Steam thing because I can't remember off the top of my head exactly um, what it is. So pardon if you can't hear the music now because I'm going to the store page just so I can read the information to you. So we're playing as Alice, who's just had an unsettlingly lifelike dream about the end of the world. She retells her experience to her friend in a huge branching narrative. Um, so a single playthrough can take about 20 minutes, but you can go down different paths and be different Alice's. Um, I originally started this game. I legit started and got through this, but then the loading was taking forever. And I was like, you know what? I'm I'm just going to cut the loading part out so you guys don't have to sit with me for like 10 minutes of loading because I don't know how long it takes. It was taking a little bit too long. So I was like, I'm going to start over. Uh, so basically, uh, this is a visual novel, meaning it is a mainly text-based piece of interactive fiction, a book where you get to decide what, decide what happens. We're old hat to this. We do this a lot. Most of the gameplay consists of picking your choices from a selection of options, which will further the story. Bottom of the Well does have some gameplay aside from multiple choice, though, the most important of which is the kind of Alice, our protagonist, you're going to play. For your first playthrough, we recommend you use the default Alice, but customization is there to be used. Even if you complete the game, a different Alice might have a very different experience. If nothing else, you might just find a new way to die. Okay, so default Alice. I did a randomly generated one, but I'm kind of thinking we want Dark Alice, just for the hell of it. Dark Alice is an Alice min-max for maximum ruthlessness and efficiency. She will almost certainly be able to survive most of what the world throws at her, but she will not be able to reach the absolute final ending. She is a canny, super fit survivor with excellent organizational skills, albeit without a social or romantic bone in her body. Oh, well, maybe we don't want Dark Alice. Can we go back? Uh, go back. We can do a random Alice. So random Alice is, what do we get? We have no social life. I don't know. Can we roll over another random Alice? No, let's roll another random Alice. Survival's good. I don't really need the... Is this career? Can we customize this? Can we subtract one? And then can we like give her more supplies? I feel like supplies are probably better. I don't think we really need dating. We probably need more fitness. What? Is this career? Alice has majored in English, which is not the most immediately useful skill in the post-apocalypse. The career stat is part skill, part representative or position in academia, which might be less than useful in the post-apocalypse. It might, however, open some interesting venues of approach. I'm just going to completely get rid of career, because I could give a crap let. Can we... Why can't I... Oh, good, I took it off. And let's just give her more social life. Okay. That's it. That's good. Let's just do that. So... Uh, today I had the weirdest dream of my life. I'm waiting for Joe to come online so I could talk to someone about this. God, I feel like I'm going crazy. I had to read that really fast because it goes, it, you can't, you don't give you time, it doesn't give you time to read it. Um, morning, uh, morning A, morning. Oh, never. Oh, hey, and it loaded faster this time. Last time, okay, this is weird. Last time the loading screen took for goddamn forever. So anyway. Uh, so like I said, it was the end of the world. Everything I did that day felt like the real thing. Every smell, every sound, every color, every touch. It's important you know that. I wasn't acting like I would in a dream. I didn't know it was a dream. Heavy. There was no warning, no buildup, nothing. Just between one moment and the next, the TV had turned to the emergency alert system, and this voice that sounded like it had been recorded in the 60s told us we were under attack. Were you alone? No, I was with some friends. We were having a movie night at my place, watching... Holy shit. I think it was actually the new Star Wars movie. There was the scene where old Han Solo was just about to get knocked over when the TV just switched. Wait, wait, wait. The new Star Wars? As in Episode 7? On DVD? You know that dates your dream, right? I hadn't even thought about that. Sorry, go on. What happened next? Like I said, the TV suddenly turned to the emergency alert system. Jacked the volume all the way up, too. I didn't even know they could do that. The broadcast told us we were under attack, right now, and that we needed to get to shelter. That we had less than 30 minutes before the bombs hit. 
Jesus, sounds scary. At first I didn't want to believe it. I switched the channel, but they were all the same. And then the sirens started. Tornado sirens, flood sirens, I don't know. And I knew things were serious. So what did you do? I went online to find out what was going on. I immediately tried to call Chess. I needed to think about my options. I don't... We'll, we'll say that? Chess, who's that? My, um, boyfriend. I mean, I don't have a boyfriend, but in my dream I did. Wait up. Tell me more about this sudden new boyfriend of yours. I thought you weren't in the dating scene. I'm totally not. <laughs> Actually, I've been thinking about putting myself out there, like maybe some online dating or something. Although I'm kind of afraid to check OkCupid okay right now. What if there's a guy there named Chess? Good icebreaker. Hi, I'm Alice. I dreamed about you last night. You were my end of the world, buddy. Funny. Aren't I just? Uh, you were saying about Chess? What kind of a name is that anyway? I wasn't really. I mean... Yeah, he was pretty hot, I guess, and smart and into me. What more could you ask for? Rich, I can sense you blushing all the way over here. Maybe I should check my OkCupid profile, actually. So what did your boyfriend think? Well, first I tried calling him, but all I got was a pre-recorded network busy message. But the net still worked, so I hit him up there. I mean, we did most of our communications and chat anyway. And? And I found him, but there was no time for, well, anything. I started typing, you know, holy hell, what the fuck is going on, style stuff, and he just tersely replied he had to go. Huh. I thought you had a thing going. There was no time to do it online. I just... By the time I had formulated my next question, he was already gone. God knows where he went. Bummer. So what did you do then? I, I guess we're going to choose all the options. What was the point? Okay, anyway. Didn't you try calling someone like your parents? Of course I tried, but it was futile. The phone network was completely overworked. But the net still worked fine. What did everyone else do? Everyone was pretty terrified. Some tried to make a joke out of it, but there was something about the voice on the TV that uh, belied that. Uh, once we figured out the net still worked, everyone was on it. So what'd you find? The net was still working. Oh my god, has she said that like 14 times? Every time she starts a sentence, it's like, the net was working. The net was still working. So the net was working? Was the net working, Alice? I, I don't know. You haven't clarified that for me. Uh, but the bandwidth was, was, was severely lacking. The major news networks were either down or overloaded. But all the big search engines defaulted to some kind of government site and super simple HTML. The kind that confirmed it really was the real deal. Isn't the net supposed to be some kind of uh, DARPA, DARPA invention anyway? Wouldn't it... Wouldn't be surprised if they had some kind of system in place to take it over if need be. Well, they hadn't taken it over. You could still go wherever you wanted. Facebook still worked. Apocalypse-proof servers. Nice. It was insane. I tried to get in touch with my brother. He's the only one who's even got an account. But there was no reply. I spammed my aunts and sent an email to my mother. But I don't know. It felt like I needed to find someone right there and then. And? A group chat. It was spreading through a social network like wildfire. Someone had found the closest old fallout shelter that was uh, actually still operable down on 3rd. People were going there, just grabbing all they could and running before the bombs fell. So what happened next? You know, I did find you online. That must have been useless. I'm all the way over in Old Blighty, unless things were different in your dream. No, you were still in the UK. The bombs had already started falling there. We... You... You disappeared. There was nothing more to do. It was only a dream, Al. Sure. So then what? The old fallout shelter was down on 3rd. It wasn't far. Close enough to walk, anyway. Or run. Did you think to bring anything? Oh, right. Yeah, I grabbed the biggest bag I had. A backpack. People always called it magic. You could fit so much into it. Bigger on the inside and all that. It's a fucking TARDIS. Uh, we should take a first aid kit. Um, take food. Uh, do we really need a sleeping bag? Oh, is this the stuff that we can bring? Spare clothes, maybe? A radio? We can't fit anything else. A flashlight we can hold in hands. Can we take extra food? We can't. Dude, we only have three things in our inventory. We suck. Uh, we can drop the spare clothes. We don't really need the spare clothes. Um, we got a flashlight. We need first aid. Do we really need the radio to know what's going on? I feel like maybe we should take, like... Let's just take the radio. <laughs> Whatever! I'm
me to die. We only have enough food for one day. Well, go on. What was it like? Did you run into trouble? You could say that. God, that shelter. So we headed towards the shelter. I think we were all hoping it was just a false alarm and tomorrow everything would be back to normal. Like an extreme version of Orson Welles' War of the World broadcast. Um, so I have backpacks and I'm pretty sure I could put a change of clothes, a couple things of food, a radio, a flashlight, and all. I could fit way more shit than she had. And, and uh first aid kit which I don't have but I could totally you know I don't really know what a first aid kit's gonna do if we're starving to death so actually the panic that radio show caused was greatly exaggerated probably by Wells himself and it worked we still remember it today great ad campaign guess that English lit degree is coming to some use at least yeah well it didn't really feel like it I remember trying to think of words to describe the way the streets felt the way the city sounded turmoil chaos anarchy tumult pandemonium the captain of hell now who's got a degree in lit stop stalling yeah it's just so fucking damn like i said everything felt so real the panic in the streets the accidents everywhere with no emergency responder showing up and the ever-present siren it was like everyone walked with their eyes to the sky just expecting to see a flash did you make it to the shelter okay the shelter was actually in the basement of a bar they use it as storage uh, which was handy since there was a door towards the street, but there were no signs or anything like that anymore. I just knew about it from the Facebook conversation. Okay, wait, isn't that that bar you always go to, the Rad Bar? Yeah, hey, yeah. Go on, Alice, did you get in? We went to the old entrance, which was down a narrow side alley. Some of the others were waiting there for us, and a few more came while we said our hellos. It actually felt pretty safe in that big group. She puts way more detail into explaining a dream than most people do. Like, okay, so we went to this bar and like, I don't know, the door was like down a side alley or something like that. You know, like, oh, so we were saying hello. And then like Tom was telling me about his day. Like, think too much detail. The suspense is killing me. So I knocked on the door and then immediately tried the handle. It was locked. Nothing happened for a while, but then the door opened just a bit and she stuck her head out. She? The bitch queen. She's this redheaded chick who had taken charge of everything in there. She's the one who originally posted about the place, so I guess she felt she owed it, so owned it somehow. So we have him, he's the Mad Hatter. She's Alice, the Red Queen, Chess, her boyfriend, in her dream. So it's kind of interesting, obviously, that, you know... I mean, you kind of knew when your name is Alice, but it's still kind of cool that, like, all of her people that she's meeting are, like, Alice in Wonderland characters. You know, because it's like she's having this dream. She stood there in the doorway looking me over and then basically said, we're full, like it was an exclusive club. I can't believe they just keep you off for no good reason. Was it actually full? Ha, <laughs> not a chance. There was a sign on the door that said capacity 100. There's just no way there was 100 people in there already. I said as much. She didn't reply. I guess you didn't just let it be at that. I tried talking my way in. I wasn't having any of this shit. The door clearly said capacity 100 people. Is she going to repeat a capacity 100 people like 14 fucking times too? That's getting really annoying. Like, uh, there was no way there was 100 people in there. So what did you do? I pushed with all my might, but she wouldn't budge. She was stronger than she looked. We were at an impasse, but at least she hadn't just closed the door. What'd you do? <sighs> I tried talking my way in. You can't just leave us out here and so forth. She just repeated that they were full, that there wasn't enough food for anymore, and that we should try to find some other place to hide. Stone cold bitch indeed. I tried telling her we wouldn't be a burden. We had brought food. I opened my bag and showed her. You're nicer than I would be. What did she say? I punched her in the face. She looked at the food and then at the others, and then said she could let me in because I had food, but anyone who didn't have food would be left outside. Guess it's a good thing I brought food. The actual fuck? What a... Mm -hmm. What did you do? Yeah, I told her there were others out here and that we wanted in. That's not a very good argument if the premise is the place is full. Yes, except that I used it as leverage. I told her we were coming in one way or another. I guess there was something about the way I said it that made the others realize it was time to loom closer. You're a right thug. So she let you in? Reluctantly. But you did try to get the rest in with you, right? Well, well, good. So how did that math work out? It wasn't math. It was narrative. Her narrative was the shelter is full, but we can take people who already have their own supplies because we have none to spare. I knew that already. It was bullshit, but I had to humor her. Uh-huh. Anyway, the narrative math was very simple. One day of food for every person she was letting in. So? 
So we talked about it, but of course I only had enough for myself. Or for one other. Oh, so I gotta like... I decided to go in alone. I gave up my food at my spot. I'm just going alone. Uh-huh. I only had enough food to feed myself. Should I have given it to someone else instead? No. Or, well, if there'd been families or children. It was just us childless 20-somethings there. Fair enough, I guess. Still pretty cold. Anyway, I left the others behind and the door closed behind me with a bang. Now I have no friends. <laughs> That's kind of douchey. Like, I would have been like... I, especially because the narrative says, like, I'm gonna... We're coming in. And then it's like, oh, no, but I'm just gonna go by myself. Like, so you go from, like, trying to help other people to being like, well, I can just let myself die. Or screw you guys. There's no, like, intermediate of, like, hey... There's a group of people. We can shove that damn door open and get the frick in there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know. I barely had time to get my bearings before she started taking command again, telling me to hurry up and empty my bags. Empty me bags? Empty your bags? She had some kind of notion she could be in charge of the supplies. And what did you say to that? Holy shit, Alice. I didn't know you had it in you. I don't know. I was tired, stressed out of my mind, panicking, and the bitch tried to keep us outside, and now she wanted my stuff? I didn't have time for her shit. You go, girl. How'd she react? Stunned that someone would actually stand up to her? What did she have to say for herself? She said she was proprietor of the Rad Bar, and therefore the legal owner of the Fallout Shelter, and that it was only out of the kindness of her heart she allowed us inside. You mean you? Allowed you, huh? Tell me about it. I reminded her nuclear war was about to go down out there. And that whatever bullshit ownership ideas she had were quickly going on a date. There would be other forms of currency soon enough. Jeez, Alice, that was... What, a half hour after the announcement? You got real fast. I guess. I mean, this was kind of what I had been preparing for. I was just mentally in that space, I guess. Anyway, a lot of people stopped and took notice. And she... Well, she went quiet. Did she leave you alone afterward? A place of maybe 20 people in it. Us included. But she stayed away from most of us, the, most of the rest of us, so yeah, she did. Were you the last to arrive? No, soon after us there were some others. These she let in without a trouble, embracing one of them, this big burly guy with a motorcycle jacket. Someone you knew? Actually, yes. Ray was his name? He lived pretty close. I mainly knew him for his love for motorcycles. I had no idea he knew the bitch queen. But the place was still empty? Yeah, soon after, though, there was another knock. And this time the bitch queen tried to do the same thing she did with me. What did you do? Damn right. When I raised my voice at her, she just turned red. What was your approach? With force of numbers, me and my group showed up and tried to get her off. And? And she called her friend Ray over. And suddenly we were at a standstill. So what happened? I think a few got in during the discussion. But then she and Ray managed to close the door again. And that was that. So I guess in the end, you won? Uh, well, the alternative, was, the alternative was that she would have won. So what happened next? The end of the world happened next. The bombs? We were all underground, down a set of stairs leading to the actual bunker. It was filled with barrels and barrels of beer and other drinks. But at least there was light. For a while. So what actually happened? The nuclear war? Yes. We had a radio with us, and we all sat clustered around it. At first, there were sporadic reports that the U.S. missile defense system was working and that it was shooting down the incoming warheads, but then the signal turned off, and a few moments later, we felt the rumble. Holy shit, but you were okay? I suppose I should be reading his with a British accent because he's in the U.K., but whatever. Uh, you know, or some kind of accent, but whatever. You know, me. I, yeah. uh, the shelter did what it was designed to do, yeah. Although, at one point, there was a terrible sound just above, and the shelter was briefly filled with dust. I was pretty sure we were all dead. People were screaming. Babies were crying. The lights flickered and died. It was the end. Holy shit! Your subconscious wasn't joking around. We subsisted on candles and flashlights and waited for the radio to come back. It did after a while. What did it say? Just about expected fallout patterns. It sounded very recorded, but I guess there had been someone alive up there still clicking the buttons. But even that ended after a little while. Wow, okay, so how long did you stay down there? Well, the radio said there was a cloud of radioactive ash coming our way within 24 hours. and told everyone to stay inside until further notice. Then it died. So, 
I guess you stayed at least 24 hours then. Of course, the problem came when we tried to leave. What? Well, the shelter was underground, underneath a big trap door, and the house above, it had apparently collapsed on the trap door. We tried to open it, pushed and pushed, but it wouldn't budge. Damn, that's like a real nightmare, buried alive. Well, we had food down there for a while, and if we started drinking beer with our meals, we could probably stretch it out for weeks. Of course, then we'd all be kind of drunk all the time, too, but what then? Um, I'd rather be drunk and just pass out and die than, like, be sober during the apocalypse. I'm sorry. Maybe there'd be rescue. Maybe. But what if there wasn't? What did the others think? Ray and his queen wanted to sit tight and wait for help. A few of the others wanted to find an alternative way out. Dude, there's going to be so many goddamn people that need help. They're never going to find you. Just get over it. you got to help your damn self in this kind of situation. Uh, maybe through one of the ventilation shafts? A third option would be to keep working on the trap door. It opened out, but if we removed the hinges and got it to collapse inward, and then dug up through the red debris, the radioactive debris? Yes, but the radio had mentioned fallout during, falling down within 24 hours. Staying put, even if for just a few days longer, and then trying one of the other options might be optimal. Anyway, people were getting very antsy, so it was time to make some kind of decision. So what did you do? I waited for rescue. I want to work on the trapdoor. Mm, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't you get your air from the ventilation shaft? Well, yeah, so it was kind of risky to go messing with it. And we all knew that, but the trapdoor didn't feel like a good idea, and neither was staying put, so it was a shot. So what did you find out? Well, I stood on the shoulders of some of the others and managed to dislodge the grate. Well, hi, but if the ventilation shaft is blocked, you're all going to die, so I mean... You would know, hey, we're getting air. There's got to be a way out that way, right? Tuesday. Well, I stood on the shoulders of some of the others and managed to dislodge the grate on one of the shafts of the roof. I shone a flashlight in and saw it was just barely big enough for one thin-shouldered person. Sounds like someone I know. But with a bit of help, they pushed me up into the shaft. It was tight. Very tight. But I could just barely wiggle my way upwards. This was roughly the point I remembered I have a serious fear of enclosed spaces. Well, I understand. What if you got stuck? No one would be able to help you, especially if it was somewhere further up. Who knows if it even led to the surface, or if it was unblocked up there? Risky. Yeah, I know. I um, definitely had some reservations. So what did you do? What the hell? Brave. It was that or remain stuck underground. Either way, I was going to die in the dark. Still, I think most people would prefer to delegate that or then hope for the best somewhere else. Hey, don't ask me. I did what I did in the dream because that's who I was in the dream. I don't think it was me exactly. It was more like a future potential me, you know? Sure, I guess. Anyway, crawl space. How'd you do? It was tight, and it got tighter fast. I felt like hyperventilating, but somehow I got my breathing under control. The flashlight helped a lot. I guess you didn't have a piece of mushroom that would make you smaller, did you? Huh, very appropriate. No, no, I didn't. Anyway, somehow I managed to continue pushing myself up the sides of the tunnel. It wasn't exactly that bad, really, as long as I kept going slowly. You can't have been that far underground, though. It must have just been a few dozen feet, right? Sure, but there were filters, and it was thin, and it went straight up, and yeah, it was not fun. The worst part was I didn't even have any proper tools with me. Just whatever we had used to pry away the first cover. Claw hammer, I think? And what was your strategy? Slow and steady slow and steady. It wasn't easy, and I really don't want to think about what would have happened if I hadn't kept my cool. It would have been so easy to just get stuck. But you didn't. I didn't. Somehow I found myself looking at sunlight, streaming in through a grate at the very top. At this point I removed about five active coal filters, so I knew that whatever else happened, their filtration system would be broken now. In other words, you had to get them out. Yes, except that wouldn't be as easy as that. Well, I mean... They're just as in danger as you are. They don't have a filtration system, but neither do you out in the world, so. Um, Jesus, the way things looked up there. Yes. The whole building had collapsed on top of us. It was nothing but concrete and rebar and broken glass. Luckily, the ventilation shaft was on the street, and luckily nothing had fallen on it either. But the rest of the city, it was pretty much unrecognizable. So there really had been nuclear war. I didn't think there was ever any doubt. Anyway, I had a bit of breakdown. A bit of a breakdown, but then I got to business. I located the trapdoor soon enough. It was buried underneath a ton of rubble, but it actually didn't look as bad from up here. A concentrated effort from down below with some help from up here, 
would see it cleared within a day, I was sure. What about the radiation? I don't know. We had waited for a while. Everything was covered in a layer of ash, but I had no idea if it was radioactive or not. So what did you end up doing? Uh, with help, I could probably dig out the whole place a lot faster. And there had to be other survivors around. Good thinking. Where did you go? Well, the streets were a mess. Most of the buildings around had either burned or collapsed from some shockwave or other. I wandered around shouting for a while until I decided I need to be more systematic about it. Okay, systematically looking for help to dig trap people out of an underground shelter. How... How did you do that? I started by going somewhere familiar. Back to my apartment building. And lo and behold, there it stood. Or half of it anyway. Okay. Was it badly hit? You could say that. As I walked up to it, I was actually amazed at how well preserved it was. But as I got closer, I realized half of it was just gone. And everything beyond it was a ruin. It was at the very limit of the instant death zone, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, well. Now that I was there, I wanted to see what it was like. Did you know your neighbors well? As well as one might expect, so not at all. Anyway, I went inside and almost immediately heard voices. I followed the sound and soon I found a room on the ground floor. I knocked and a man opened. I recognized him. He was one of my neighbors. His name was Ross and he had a small group of other survivors. Oh, he and a small group of other survivors had gathered in one of the bottom floor apartments. There was a family with two kids, an older lady and the janitor. Not exactly a Marine Corps detachment, but better than nothing. After sharing stories of survival, they had hidden their apartments and hadn't really moved from the building. Uh, building since. I told them about the fallout shelter. Did they agree to help? The family's kids were both getting really sick. I think they wanted to find any place that was safer than here. The others also quickly agreed. With a group in tow, we returned to the shelter entrance. You didn't bother back going back up to your apartment? I did, actually, but it was nearly unrecognizable. The windows had all been blown in, and everything was covered in ash. I looked at it for a while, and yeah, it felt pretty bad, but somehow there just wasn't anything there that I wanted. It felt good to shut the door behind me and leave. Interesting. Anyway, how did the whole thing go with help? It was faster, definitely, but they still had to collapse the trap door from below. Still, we managed to get it done within a day. It must have been wonderful, though, to help dig out all those people. Were they grateful? Oh, yes, although the bitch queen still held on to her fort. She said in no uncertain terms that she was staying right there and that anyone who didn't want to wait for rescue was free to leave. And you? Were you free to stay? Not in a million years. Some of the others, though, the family with kids, were allowed to go down. It was me she went after. Queen Bee Syndrome, maybe? And the rest? The others crawled up after me. They all wanted to leave, too. A few others joined as well, jumping camp. Ross decided to stay with the family. That's why they helped excavate the shelter, after all. I said thanks to all of them and let them go. So what did you decide to do? It's time to leave town, all of us together. So going after Chess, where would you start? At his apartment, it was just a few blocks from mine. All right, so you did that. I thought it, I could go and check. How was the walk? Gruesome. I mean, the destruction lessened further away from the building, but it was still pretty bad. We're at like a half, oh, oh, hold on, let me finish reading this. Cars, bodies, ugh. But I just tucked my chin down and hurried, not stopping for anyone or anything. Um, yeah, we're already at like half an hour, but I'm kind of feeling that like, maybe we'll just play this until we die or get out or something and see what happens so this might be extremely long but it's better than breaking it up into two parts so did you have the key of course not but that didn't matter the door to the building was unlocked and when i got up to his apartment i found the door left open he must have left in such a hurry forgot to close it behind him properly i still knocked before entering but there was no one there huh so what did you do it was familiar to me his apartment i mean we actually i mean when we met, we, um, say no more. Yours or mine, etc. Damn, what a dream. Uh-huh. He had some food I could eat, fresh fruit, that kind of thing, so I availed myself to that. Did you find out where he'd gone? This is our mood, apparently. It didn't take long. He had these pictures of his sister and him everywhere. I hadn't really noticed them before. She was in a wheelchair in most of them, and on his fridge, a post-it with her address and phone number. Explains the rushed exit. Yeah, anyway, I now had an address, somewhere to go. And where was that? Well, pretty far, actually, out in the burrows. It'd take a while to walk, what with all the public transportation on order. As if you'd let something like that deter you. 
True, but it was pretty far, and I was alone. It would be dangerous, but what happened to all of our friends? Did you reconsider? I had a place to go, and the will to get there. The only thing remained was the actual getting there. I explained to the others, and they understood and wished me good luck. What did it look like? The streets? Awful. Ruined buildings everywhere, charred by fire, most of them. We had to pick our way between cars and debris and bodies. There were so many bodies. It makes me sick just to think about it. it. Must have been pretty difficult to travel. This is a really detailed dream for the fact that your dreams are usually very short. Yes, although it was oddly inconsistent, I think my building was the last one directly affected by the blast. About a block in the opposite direction, there were mainly intact buildings. As much as you could call them intact, I guess. Still standing? What about others? Were there any survivors on the streets? Yeah, there were others. A lot of them were a lot worse off than me. Some were blind, others were burned, broken, or in shock. There... there just wasn't anything I could do. Where was the government? I don't know. No one knew. I hadn't heard a single ambulance siren since the event. For all we knew, there was nothing left. I mean, don't you think if there's going to be a nuclear attack, that one of the places that they're going to target first, if you're in the U.S., is like, Washington! Bye-bye! They're uh, going to target the major cities. So, like, where's the government? Dead? Fucking dead. They're goddamn dead. Like, I mean, you're not like, let's just think that weird backwoods town in Alabama that nobody knows about. Like, Hicksville? Yeah, let's bomb that place. No, you're going after the major cities, so, you know, bye. Plus, I mean, the emergency responders, like, yeah, it's gonna be, I mean, that would just be, yeah. So she was dreaming that, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna let that thought die with me, but anyway. And the burrows? Well, as I left the center, things became less charred and destroyed, but there was destruction everywhere. It felt like no part of the town had escaped the bombs. Go on, how did it go? It was pretty slow going, and there was this ashy rain half the time. But there wasn't all that much I could do. At least I had a goal. So we can't, like, it just... Oh, okay, so this is the inventory. And this just tells you warning. Oh, okay. I just I just wanted to see what these things were. Uh, okay, Lucy. I made a breathing mask out of a spare shirt, although I'm not sure it helped much. But you made it. What did you find? Disappointment. The problem was, of course, that I had no idea where you might have gone. His apartment might have told me something, but there was no way I was going back there. So I gave up the idea. If I found him, it would be by chance or providence. So what did you do instead? I decided to keep going. I wanted to keep going. I don't understand the difference. Uh, there were a lot of other survivors on the road as well. And soon enough, the rumors started circulating. There was a government evacuation center set up in the old college. Everyone was going there. The college? As in your college? Yep. Talk about coming back to the beginning. Anyway, that's where everyone was headed. There was just one minor problem. Oh? The river. There's a river? Not something I had thought about either. I didn't live anywhere near it. So whatever I crossed it, I just drove over it. But there was a geographical reality. So, I mean, the bridges were surely still there. True, but when we approached them, we realized they were occupied. Uh-oh, by who? I'm not sure. I saw them from afar and kind of ducked into cover. I saw immediately they weren't good news. They had guns and they were harassing the other people who'd come to the bridge. I think they were mugging them. Yeah, that would totally happen. And fall out, you'd have the people who were just like psycho. Not like, let's all band together and help each other. Like, no, we're gonna kill everyone, loot, riot, and be fucking nuts. Like, yeah, stealing all those TVs is gonna help you in a nuclear fallout. Did they let anyone pass? Yeah, some, but I didn't know what the price was or if they had some other criteria for letting people through. So what did you do? And what's to say the other bridges didn't have similar setups? Seems like a likely thing to do. I was willing to take the chance. I wasn't going to tangle with a group of armed men, even if I lost some time. How much time did you lose? Well, that's the thing. I walked about a day? Through incredibly terrible terrain towards the nearest bridge. Quakes had made the riverbank collapse in most places, and the river was for some reason churning, making it impossible to ford. And when we finally arrived, it was broken? Yes, it had collapsed. Oh jeez, no hope of getting over? Well, it had collapsed, but not totally. Half of it was dragging in the current, some cars still hanging on by some form of magic. Maybe it would be possible to balance across, but it looked pretty risky. 
I was so damn disappointed and tired, though, it actually felt like a good idea. I mean, how about just backtracking instead? Uh, I think we're gonna die, but whatever. Such a bad idea, Alice. I wasn't sure how much longer I could go on without making a stupid decision. Or maybe this was my last straw. What was your plan? My resolve almost failed me when the remnants of the bridge started creaking underneath me. Imagine the feeling of something so massive actually moving as you moved. It felt like it could collapse at any moment. You're insane. I ran the first stretch easy enough, climbing over a car just about to collapse into the abyss. As my feet hit the ground on the far side of it, it started to move and groan, and the whole bridge shuddered like a drunk trying to keep his footing. Uh-oh. I ran faster. There was a narrow stretch of rebar. I didn't stop. I just balanced out on it like some action hero and jump ran across. I have no idea how I did that without falling off. Didn't you tell me a story the other day about how you fell off your stepladder in the kitchen when you tried to reach the top cupboard? Dream me is more badass than that. So, did you make it across? I... The bridge was falling behind me, being swept away by the river, and I dashed as fast as I could. I almost thought I'd made it when something snagged my heavy backpack. What? Snagged it? I think it was a piece of the bridge supports or railing or something. I was just ducking underneath some rubble when it happened. My backpack got caught. I fell to the ground. I felt the ground shift underneath me while I was struggling with getting it off. No way. I was dragged across the tilting bridge by an unstoppable force while I scrambled helplessly for a handhold. But even if I'd found one, it would have been too late. Me and a few tons of concrete and rebar and cars all tumbled together into the river. That's nightmare material right there. I think we just died. Luckily, I got most of my breath knocked out of me when I hit the water. And then I don't remember much else. Darkness, panic, that first breath that was painful, and then nothing. And? And thus concluded my dream. Woo! We killed her! <laughs> well, that was interesting. What do you think? I think I felt incomplete. Like there was something missing. That wasn't the way it was supposed to end, you know? Dreams are supposed to end in certain ways. This one was, I think. I felt like I was trying to tell me something, but I wasn't listening closely enough. Maybe you could try again next night. See if you have hear the same recording. Speaking of, what frequency was this on? That's on the weird part. When I tried to see, I realized I had hit the right channel, and I was in fact reading Alice in Wonderland. Uh, it was in fact reading. This isn't exactly some obscure number station frequently on the AM bands. Well, maybe you'll dr uh, dream it next night again anyway. That's the good thing with dreams. You can always dream them again, and maybe do something different the second time around. Okay, so that was it. Uh, so... Our first playthrough took 40 minutes and we killed her. I kind of figured going across that bridge might, but I wasn't like, let me purposely try to, you know, keep her alive as long as possible because we're already kind of at the 40 minute mark. So, but that's kind of cool that you can do different things, be a different type of Alice in the dream and like get across. So, um, yeah, I, I might try other things on my own spare time. I probably won't record anymore, but uh, I just kind of wanted to, like play and just fill in some space that I had this week and then you know next week we'll probably start a new longer graphic novel graphic novel visual novel uh, but yeah so anyway that was the bottom of the well so yeah remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more